Hello, my name is Philip Cameron. Maybe I should say top of the morning to you because I'm going to be taking you to Ireland in a few minutes. This is a great program today, sharing about fences. You are going to learn something today. And also we're going to be sharing with you about the great work we're doing in Moldova that I know that God is going to speak to your heart to be a part of. I'm so glad you have joined us today. Welcome to Daily Faith. standing on the west coast of Ireland, right beside the Atlantic Ocean. And what's been striking me as we've been driving is these walls. There is hundreds and hundreds of miles of walls. Ireland is famous for its lace, but these walls are all dry stone. There's no cement. They're just put over the centuries, farmers clearing fields. But the thing that struck me was how small the pens, how small the areas are. I guess that reflected those days how to keep things together rather than let things grow. In your world, don't build your walls of your life so small that you can't grow and you can't allow God to do something bigger than you've ever done before. Walls can keep things in, but a wall built can also keep things out. And I just hope that you are going to ask God to expand your horizons and open your eyes to see a greater day than ever before. Walls. Some walls are good. Some walls limit our future. <laughs> oh my goodness, as I'm watching that, I'm remembering just how cold I was. I'm spoiled. I'm Scottish, but I live in Alabama, where it's warm most of the time. And we went to Ireland, I think that was November we did that video, and I like to freeze to death, I'm telling you now. But those walls were amazing, they were tiny. In those d dark days of, of yore, the mists of yore, where the walls come from, these dry, we call it steen, stone, steen dikes, dry stone, we, we call them dry steen dikes in Scottish. And what they are is that they, as they cleared the field for their an animals, they would pick up the stones and put it in a pile, and then they would build a wall out of it. And so all of those stones, tiny wee areas, I mean, like the, smaller than a room in some of the cases. I have no idea why they thought that this was a good idea. But they just kept building these wee, wee fields in the middle of the, the walls because that was all they could see at that time. They never saw tractors. They had no idea of combine harvesters. They had an idea of trucks that could ship 100, 500 sheep at a time. They, they had no concept. They were living a, a world of existence, just surviving where they were. And it reflected in the walls of their life. Ooh, isn't that so true? Things that we are afraid of, we build a wall against. Thoughts and fears, we build walls. But the sad thing is this. Walls can keep people out, but walls can also keep you in. And I really sensed when I saw that back then, I thought, oh my goodness, I've got to share this with you, that it's time that walls come down. Now, I know in our politically charged day we're living in, the walls are going up, and I agree that America needs to have a border. This is not that kind of wall I'm talking about. This is a wall of your heart that limits you to see what God has called you to do. Limitations of, of your experience or your talent. I am one of the least talented people I know. But I'll tell you what I decided in my life a long time ago. That whenever God gives me an opportunity, I am going to take it. I'm going to reach beyond where I am to where I need to be. And I'm going to climb over the wall and if necessary break the wall down. But I refuse to allow the circumstance of my today to rob me from getting to where God has ordained me to be. My heart has no, oh, sing that song. My heart has no, listen, this is one of my favorite verses in all, of, it comes from the, the song, Lord, Lift Me Up. Um, but uh, I think it's in G, I try, uh, up, up a step. My heart has no desire to stay 
where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where these abound my constant aim is higher ground Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and where light and love and joys abound Lord plant my feet on higher ground my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where these abound my constant aim is higher ground I'm sitting next to my daughter my oldest daughter Melody she's lived with me for well over 30 years married now two babies of our own knows me inside and out knows my faults and failings knows the strong parts of my life but I'll never ever have her say about me he didn't try he didn't believe God he didn't take ridiculous risks he never settled where he was he always wanted to reach higher than what he was he wanted to do more for God finished one thing and started something else you know why because I refuse to allow walls to stop me whatever wall it is I want to come against it in the name of Jesus I want to climb over it and get to higher planes I want to see beyond the barriers of my mind and my background and my Scottish history and everything else oh I'm the son of an alcoholic who is the son of an alcoholic that is a wall that I refuse to accept I will knock that thing down and I will move on my dad took me out of school when I was 13 to travel with him in America and I never got back to high school so I don't have a high school diploma never let me stop never stop me from going on I built a Bible school I never went to a Bible school but I built one and other kids came to a Bible school I built Do you know why because I refuse to let walls stop me and I challenge you in the name of Jesus whatever it is I'm talking to pastors right now and you seem to just be going nowhere bumping up against tiny wee walls in little wee ever decreasing space and you're thinking my God I'm stuck in this place no you are not get out of where you are get out of your pen and get higher my heart has no desire to stay listen where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where these abound my constant aim is higher ground come on you know that old song sing it with me Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and where light and love and joy abounds Lord plant my feet on higher ground get out of your pen knock down that wall God has bigger stuff ahead for you and he can only use you to the limit and to the measure that you are given over to him if you Jesus the Bible says couldn't heal them for their unbelief it's not me it's not God that doesn't want to give me and bless me and enlarge me it's me that doesn't want to be enlarged I pray the days a brand new day I, that was not what I planned but oh I'm so glad that God gave it to us watch this video full house it's time for household salvation will help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation do you know that you have a covenant throughout scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years 
And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. If I could only put into your spirit right now that God wants to knock down the walls that are stopping your family getting saved, I'm telling you, you are God's contact person. You are the one that God has chosen to say to the devil, you are not stopping me from getting my family saved. And walls of doubt and fear, all the stuff, my goodness, that the devil can put in your mind. You, want, you imagine the prodigal father, how many days he spent at the end of that road watching for his, kids, his son to come home. He's an old man. You don't see something far away by chance. The Bible says when he was a far way off, the father saw him. You don't see something a far way off by chance. You could be looking for it. And that old man, every day, I believe it, went up to the end of the road and stood and waited. Waited. Climbed over the walls of doubt and despair. People in the family, workers said, man, you're, he's dead by now. That boy's go gone by now. He's dead. Maybe his stories have come back that he's drinking and, and the Bible said he wasted his inheritance on prostitutes and parties. And the dad heard the bad news and, and everyone else wrote the kid off. Nah, there's no point waiting for him. He's gone. You got a good boy here. Forget the one that's gone. Every morning the dad would get up and say, have you fed that calf? I'll be back in a wee while. Looking down that road waiting for his prodigal son. If I, can you imagine the walls he had to climb over? And I'm here to tell you right now, if you are God's point person in your family to see your family saved, I want to stand with you in agreement. I want you to write me today. You've got family members you want saved. I want them saved too. The Bible says if two agree is touching anything, it shall be done. And my address, you can write this today. Take a piece of paper and write out your family's names one by one, and I'll read them one by one and put them into our we ark that we have in our office as, an, as, just an, as, as a symbol of us putting your family into the ark of safety. And our address is just Philip Cameron, our daily faith, P.O. Box 242-246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124, 242-246. It's on your screen. Write that address down. Send me your loved one's names. And I promise we are going to see the barriers and the walls that are holding them bound, broken in the name of Jesus. And get my book, Full House. It'll help. It teaches you. It inspires you and it teaches you to see your family saved. And I know you'll be blessed by that. We've got a very special video coming up right now of what we do in Moldova, reaching into kids' lives that have no hope other than the hope of the gospel through our hands. Watch this. Moldova is the poorest country in all of Europe. If you live two miles outside the city, there are no streets, no sidewalks. There is grinding, soul-destroying poverty. This compression of poverty breaks spirits and hearts. When a family breaks, Usually, a parent will go abroad for a job and leave the kids behind with all kinds of promises. And they just don't come back. This causes orphans, abandoned kids. And those kids are warehoused in orphanages. No one cares about them. Every day, they are told things like, nothing plus nothing will always be nothing. Your mother doesn't want you. Your father doesn't want you. We don't want you. Every piece of paper they have is stamped orphan, a stigma that goes with them throughout their lives. At 16, they graduate. They age out of the orphanage, given a few dollars and a bus ticket to whatever name of town is on their birth certificate, and they're sent away. Many end up in a bus station, and a car drives up. And a man steps out and says, looking for a place to go, looking for a job. I have an uncle in Italy, and we're looking for waitresses. We'll pay your ticket there. We'll help you get there. 
And a wee girl that has no experience, painfully naive, gets in the back of a car. Within 24 hours of getting in that car, she is taken away and raped and beaten mercilessly. They use them 30 to 50 times a day until there's nothing left. The orphan's hands has managed to break that cycle. They come to us with the clothes on their back. Many have never had any dreams of going to school or any hope of living a normal life, marked forever because they're an orphan. And we take them in and we give them their own bed and their own clothes. We enroll them in a good school and suddenly despair begins to turn to hope. The only way for me to survive, it was to put me in a hospital for children which are sick with tuberculosis. And um, I stayed there for 10 years. So I wasn't sick, I was a normal child. I didn't have any problems with my health. But it was the only place that could receive these little babies like me. For 10 years, I didn't know that I have a family. And I didn't even know my real name. After I finished the orphanage, um, I didn't know where to go. After a few months, I met the, family, uh, the Cameron family, and um, they changed my life. I'm very thankful that uh, God found me. Though I didn't know my real name when I was in the hospital, um, my God chose me and knew before I was born, and he had a plan with me before I was born. And thank you for being a part of my life because of you. Now I have this opportunity to speak for those that are still in these difficult periods like I, am, I was. And because of you, now I have a voice to speak about those that are lost now. You have incredible power right now. You have the power of life and death in the yes of your heart, in the stretch of your hand, to allow a young girl who tonight is absolutely lost, who today sits with no hope, to lift them out of darkness and say to them, we love you and we care for you because God does. And we will stand with you through the storm until the new day comes. We will stand, and that's exactly what the Orphan Hands does. We take young girls and boys that are at the point of being put on the street, and instead of them being lost, we tell them, we've got a place for you to come. We have a home, a safe place. We've discovered over many years of working like this that awareness does not work by itself. Every one of the girls in our houses there's a video, I forget the name of it, Lilia. Um, Lilia Forever. Lilia Forever. Mm -hmm. And every one of the orphans are shown this video. So they're, they're made aware of trafficking. Yeah. But when you're put out on the street and it's midnight and you're starving and it's raining and you've nowhere to go and no family and a woman walks up and says, we're looking for a nanny for our kids or our grandkids. And we'll give you $50 a month and a place to stay. They roll the dice. And that's when hell begins. They use them 30 to 50 times a day. Can you imagine that? The reason why I do what I do was because of my, my daughter Melody is sitting beside me. When I first learned of this, she was their age and I could not. I didn't approach this as, as a preacher. I approached this as a dad. I thought, my goodness gracious me. If it was my daughter, wouldn't I want someone to save them? If it was my daughter, wouldn't I want someone to build a place that was safe? That's what I did. That's what we're doing every day. Every morning I wake up, there are a lot of mouths to feed shoes and jeans and clothes and school fees and books 
and dentists and doctors and all the stuff you have for your kids, we have multiplied 50 times. The new homes at Vatra that are almost finished, they're paid for, we're just finishing them off. We need two houses finished, about $50,000 per house to finish those. But those houses will house 90 kids that we will transform their lives from orphans into sons and daughters and then from sons and daughters into missionaries. And the impact they are having on a nation is beyond anything I've ever could have imagined. And Mel, you know, you go there as much as I do and um, they think you're their big sister. I am their big sister. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yep. The impact. Tell us, tell us what you found, how just loving them and, and making them our family, like they think that you're the, the, you are the big sister. Yeah, I, it's the incredible thing about Orphan Sands is it is the gospel, like in essence. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus came to this earth that we'd be saved. We'd come to know him. And then he said, go forth and make disciples. And that is what we're doing. They come into these houses. We love as them. As orphans. I as mean, orphans, lost, broken. Identityless. Just as we, Jesus found us lost, hopeless, broken. And he brings us into his family. And we bring these kids into our family. And they get to know us. But they get to know Christ. Just as, you know, when we come to know Christ, we, we get to know him. And then as we become familiar with him and what he desires for us, then we want to share him with others. And these kids are doing that. They're coming to the home. They're not only knowing us as family family, they're coming to know Jesus. And they're coming to know that they have a purpose for their life, that God has amazing, incredible things for them to do. And uh, so that's one of the things I love about the Orphan's Hands. So we're not just putting a roof over their head and sending to school, which is all incredible, wonderful, great yeah. things. But they're finding pur purpose for their life. They're following what Jesus has told us to do, to go out and reach the poor and the broken and those who don't know about him. And um, it all starts because we say, you matter. We love you. They belong to us. They need some, someone to say, you can do it. You're, you're called, you're able, you're uh, able to do all these things. And so I, I, think it's, I think it's pretty incredible and we're so blessed to be able to, to be a part of it and we're so glad that you guys come alongside us and help and make it possible. It's all because of you two and um, maybe you've never heard, this is the first time you've heard of us, you've seen us, um, but I can promise you this, if you, so into this soil, it's a good soil, good soil. It's fertile soil, and you can continue to watch these videos. Every episode will have a vi another video of another uh, amazing young man or woman doing incredible things. And so there are more kids out there just like them that need somewhere to go, Waiting somewhere to, to be, in. need to know Jesus, need to know the call of, on of his, his life on their lives, call it, his call on their lives. Sorry, it's hard to get out. Um, and you can make that possible. And it's a a blessing is an honor to be used by Jesus Absolutely. to reach those that are lost and broken. It's what he's called us to do. If I could take you to one of those kids or one of the outreaches they do, and I could say we can support all of these kids by giving a dollar a day, less than a can of Coke, I am certain that most of you would say, I can afford to do that. That's exactly what I'm asking. Could you help us by giving one dollar a day out of your life? One dollar, thirty dollars a month. Every house that we have at this Vatra village that we've bought requires 120 people giving a dollar a day. If we get 124 giving a dollar a day, it's paid for and sponsored, and we can move on to the next house. We have dozens of kids waiting to come in, and we have the home. Some some are finished, two are unfinished of the six. And now we are looking for the furniture and the containers to get that part done. And we need your help to make the miracle continue. Father, in Jesus' name, watch me just now that our folks that could give abundantly, generously, out of their abundance. But I talk to every mom and every grandmother, everyone that's 
got their own daughters and their own sons that they can't imagine this ever happening to them. Speak to their, their hearts, Lord Jesus, right now to go to the phone and say, I'll be a part of this. In Jesus' name. You can call us right now by calling 1-833-DAILY-FAITH. 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or 833-324-5932. And just say, I want to be a part of what God is doing. I'll give a dollar a day. I can promise you this. There is no richer soil than you'll ever put it in. Never. We love what we do. We are called to do it. We just need others around us to hold our hands up to reach into the darkness and rescue some more. You are part of a miracle. We love you so much. See you again. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to post office box 242246 Montgomery, Alabama 36124 So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.